What's up guys, you're back with Technic and today I have a camera comparison for you between the Xiaomi Mi 10 Pro, the Oppo Find X2 Pro and the Samsung Galaxy S20 Ultra. The Find X2 Pro comes with a 32 megapixel selfie snapper, the Mi 10 Pro with a 20 megapixel one and the S20 Ultra with a 40 megapixel front facing camera. The Find X2 Pro comes with a 48 megapixel IMX 689 main camera with four to one pixel binning, a 13 megapixel periscope, 48 megapixel ultra wide. The Mi 10 Pro comes paired with a 108 megapixel ISOCELL HMX bright sensor with 4 to 1 pixel binning, 8 megapixel long tailor, 12 megapixel short tailor, and 20 megapixel ultra wide. The S20 Ultra comes with a 108 megapixel ISOCELL HM1 bright sensor with 9 to 1 pixel binning, 48 megapixel periscope lens, 12 megapixel ultra wide, and 0.3 megapixel 3D TOF lens. I went around running in Shanghai over here, so stay tuned for a stabilization test. Guys, this is Technic, and without further ado, let's go. We're gonna start here with bin picks. Take a look at the top left corner of each individual photo over here. So we're gonna go from bin to regular photo, regular photo being 108 megapixel on the Xiaomi, 108 megapixel on the Samsung and 48 megapixel on the Oppo. Now you did, go, you guys did ask for a cropped photo. So here it is a cropped photo of their main lenses over here. And you can see the most amount of detail with the Samsung lens over here. Back to the bin shot. We have a 12 megapixel bin shot on the Find X2 Pro, but I must say it stands out quite well against these other two monsters with the 108 megapixel lenses. Remember the Samsung has a 12 megapixel bin shot because it uses 9 to 1 binning as opposed to the 4 to 1 binning on the Xiaomi and it uses a 27 megapixel bin shot over there. Cropped again once you can see over there and back to a bin shot here which we're going to shoot straight through to the main lenses. You can see that the main lenses and the bin lenses don't, well the bin shot doesn't look too different from the actual main lens. We're going to shoot from ultra wide over here. We actually used a bin pick on the Oppo. It uses native 48 megapixel ultra wide over there and when it is binned and regular 48 megapixel you can't see too much of a difference there. Of course that will change with a crop and I'll show you guys a little bit later. Here is the ultra wide with the bin. Here is a 48 megapixel ultra wide on the Oppo as opposed to the other ones. And going into the crop shot, I actually think that the Xiaomi does the best job with its crop shot because it still has a 20 megapixel ultra wide sensor there. I'm gonna go from bin there. Now to ultra wide, checking out these plants over here and going to that 12 megapixel bin shot over here on the Oppo, 12 megapixel bin on the Samsung and the 27 megapixel bin on the Xiaomi. Ultra wide again and back to the bin shot over here. I think the colors really do pop on the Oppo as opposed to the other ones, but I think that the Samsung has the most neutral colors if you have to ask me. Going back to the bin shot over here, you can see that the most amount of color you see often is on the Oppo over there as opposed to the others, and sometimes the Xiaomi gets a little bit dark. As you can see with the darkness over here, the Xiaomi's photo is slightly darker than the others, but retains quite a lot of detail. Once again, the darkness shines through on the Xiaomi with its ultra wide lens, and we have that 48 megapixel ultra wide on the Oppo. We're gonna jump into our main picture over here, which is no binning at all, and then shoot straight through to binning on all three devices. Remember the 27 megapixel on the Xiaomi is binned from 108. Now we're gonna to go to two times optical on all of them. We only have periscope lenses on the two phones on the right and five times optical on all of them with the periscope lenses on the right hand side. Now this is that clock tower over here in, Cham in Shanghai. I'm not sure if you guys have seen it before. Ultra wide and we're gonna jump into the main picture over here on all of them. You can see it's the brightest on the Oppo. I'm really surprised with that. It has the least amount of megapixels but guys remember that when you are looking at megapixels as opposed to resolution, 100 8 megapixels is almost 16k so that is twice an 8k tv you're never really going to be able to view those kind of photos it's more for retaining detail and that is why the likes of samsung oppo and xiaomi bin their pictures we can go into 50 times 60 times and 100 times respectively on these devices with zoom the 100 times being the samsung the 60 being the oppo and the lowest the xiaomi having 50 times zoom this is the Bund area in Shanghai. It looks absolutely phenomenal with the TV tower over there. I'm gonna go into the bin shot over here. You can see that the Samsung actually is quite dark, but it keeps the most amount of detail. Going into the two times optical on all devices. Then we're going into five times optical on all of them. Samsung and Xiaomi have the most amount of detail there on five times, but it's shoot over to 10 times hybrid and the Xiaomi is quite blurry. Blurry once again on 30 times on the Xiaomi, 30 times on the other two devices still looks great. And 100 times on the Samsung is awesome as opposed to the 60 times on the Oppo and 50 times on the Xiaomi. When you're taking pictures of me outside of here, using the back cameras, things look pretty wonky with ultra wide, but as soon as we jump into the main pictures, I think that the Oppo being the brightest, Xiaomi being the darkest, and the Samsung once again being the best when it comes to detail. Going into the bin shot and now into the portrait, the regular portrait mode is two times on the Xiaomi. This is not a portrait mode, but it uses natural bokeh on these cans and it looks absolutely superb. Moving on to the video section of the video, we all have, we have 1080p on six, at 60 frames per second on all devices over here. I think the Xiaomi is the most wonky. We do have optical image stabilization on 
all three devices over here. But once again, I do think that the Xiaomi is quite wonky, but as soon as we switch over to 4K 60 frames per second on all of them, the Xiaomi is a little less wonky, but you can still kind of see it shaky over there. We're gonna move on to 8K over here. And now remember, we only have 8K on the Xiaomi and the Samsung. The Xiaomi is capped at 30 frames per second, as opposed to the Samsung's 24 frames per second. The Oppo is lacking 8K, so this is a 4K clip over here. We're gonna move on to ultra wide over here. And ultra wide is actually quite shaky, the most shaky on the Xiaomi once again. I'm really surprised by this because of what they advertised with their great stabilization. I think the Samsung is the most stable over here, but the Samsung is capped at 30 frames per second using ultra wide at 1080p or 4K. While the Oppo is limited to 57 frames at 1080p and 27 frames at 4K, which is quite strange, but at least we have the option for 4K ultra wide. But we have ultra wide 60 frames per second on the Xiaomi using 4K and 1080p regardless. Now this is a clip of me running over here, very wonky on the Xiaomi, no stabilization modes on on any of the devices. Now we're gonna go ahead and switch those stabilization on, on all the devices and you can see the Samsung is the most stable second being the Oppo and the most wonky being the Xiaomi over there. Now we're gonna go shoot over to night mode over here. There is no night mode on at the current moment. All of these will be binned and night mode on. You can see that the Samsung adds quite a yellow finish. I think the most natural colors coming from the Oppo and the Xiaomi brightens things up, but loses a lot of detail. You can see the Oppo actually retains the most amount of detail in night mode. And with its 12 megapixel binned from 48, I'm really surprised with this. Look at the night mode on that Oppo. It is so fantastic, I cannot believe it. I didn't think that it would be able to trump these 108 megapixel devices, but in my opinion, it's doing doing a better job. Moving on to other modes that we have here at night, we're gonna shoot to outdoors over here and you can see with the night mode on, the Samsung actually captures the light the best and the Xiaomi tends to blow out light the most. Going into more of an outdoor, looking at some sculptures over here, night mode looks phenomenal of all of them. The Xiaomi looks a little bit glossy over there as opposed to the other two. No night mode on over here, taking a picture of this bull sculpture and you can see the night mode on the Oppo is doing a fantastic job but the Samsung holds the light the best. Xiaomi takes the, a terrible photo of me at night with night mode all four on and I think it comes out the best on the Oppo. Moving on to ultra wide over here. We're gonna go all the way into zoom. We have ultra wide night modes on the Samsung and the Oppo. This is lacking on the Xiaomi. We're gonna go to our bend pick over here and then we're gonna shoot over to night mode of the same tower we took in the day earlier. Look at the sky in the Oppo. It makes it quite blue though. That is due to AI. No night mode option. Well, there is a night mode option on two times, but it wasn't there. Two times night mode on all three devices here. The Oppo still keeps the sky there while the other two scrap it. You can see the detail of the clock on the Samsung over there. It gets washed out with the Xiaomi with five times night mode over there. And going into 10 times hybrid on all of them, they all look pretty good. The Oppo is a little bit fuzzy there. But as soon as we put night mode on in the Xiaomi, it's very blurry as opposed to the other two. Back to that TV tower at the Bund area in Shanghai over here. We're going from ultra wide, and remember we have ultra wide night mode on the Samsung and the Xiaomi. That is lacking on on the Samsung and the Oppo. That is lacking on the Xiaomi. Bind and going over to bind night mode over here. It looks fantastic. The sky looks fantastic on the Oppo. I can't get enough of it. The colors. I think that the Samsung once again picks up the light the best. The most light noise being on the Xiaomi over there. Going into five times optical over here. You can see that the Oppo is not doing a great job zooming in. The Samsung makes everything look purple because of the purple lights coming off the tower over there. The Xiaomi is actually the most neutral over here, but the Oppo is the most neutral with 10 times night mode on. Going into the full zoom on all of them 30 times first and then jumping into 100 times on the Samsung, very blurry on all of them. I think the Xiaomi does a fantastic job with 50 times at night. Shooting over to video at night, 1080, 1080p 60 frames per second on all devices. Once again, we have that shaky feeling on the Xiaomi, but they all look pretty decent for night videography over here. Shooting over to 4K 60 frames per second. Once again, they all look pretty good, but I think that the Oppo is actually handling the light the most over here when it comes to video, where the Samsung did that when it came to pictures at night, the Oppo does it with a video. Moving on to 8K, remember we are lacking 8K in the Oppo, so this is a 4K clip of that. 24 frames per second on the Samsung. The Xiaomi is much better when it records 8K with 30 frames per second. You can definitely see the difference. Shooting over to ultra wide over here, the Xiaomi is the darkest, the Samsung is the brightest, but I think the Oppo's ultra wide is the most clear and retains the most detail without any funny grains as you see on the Samsung and the Xiaomi. Moving on to ultra wide 4K over here. Remember we capped at 30 frames per second on the Samsung, 27 on the Oppo, but we still get 60 clear frames on the Xiaomi. But the Xiaomi once again is still quite dark as opposed to the other two devices. We're gonna shoot over to selfies over here. And guys, my Samsung selfie camera actually did break. So I am using
using slightly older photos. I try to match it up with the Oppo and I'm still using the older photos on the Xiaomi as well to compare to the Samsung. We have a 6.5 selfie bin shot on the Samsung, but on the Samsung we also have ultra wide, but the ultra wide actually kind of matches with the other two's main lenses, their main selfies. We have a 32 megapixel main selfie on the Oppo over here as opposed to the 20 on the Xiaomi and a 40 on the Samsung, but the Samsung once again is binned. We're gonna shoot over to video over here guys, let me know what you guys think of the video and audio quality of the selfie cams. Yo, what's up guys? This is Technic recording a 1080p 30 frames per second video using the selfie camera on the Xiaomi Mi 10 Pro. It is limited and completely capped at 1080p and capped at 30 frames per second. Let me know what you guys think of the audio and the video quality for the Mi 10 Pro. Yo, what's up guys? This is Technic recording a 1080p 30 frames per second video on the Oppo Find X2 Pro. The Oppo Find X2 Pro is limited to 1080p and completely capped at 30 frames per second using the selfie cam. Let me know what you guys think of the audio and the video quality of the Find X2 Pro. What's up guys? This is Technic recording a 4K 60 frames per second front facing camera video on the Samsung Galaxy S20 Ultra. Let me know what you guys think of the audio quality as well as the video quality. And moving on to selfies at night over here, you can see that we have night mode on the two phones on the right. The Xiaomi is lacking night mode with the selfie cam, but it doesn't really make much of a difference since the Xiaomi actually seems to be the brightest across the board over here. We're gonna shoot over to some selfie evening video footage over here, and all of them are pretty dark. I must say that the Samsung probably is the best when recording selfie footage at night with the Xiaomi being in second place and the Oppo being dead last. It is extremely dark. Overall, I'm really impressed with all of these devices, and I must say that the Oppo, outshined the competition here. I'm really, really impressed with that. But let me know what you guys think is the best camera out of these three phones. Guys, this is Technic and I'll see you in the next one.